Hi, I'm Timothy Minnell. I'm a Senior Editor and Acquisitions Manager for APA's Planners Press and PAS Reports. I'm here at the National Planning Conference in Minneapolis with Reed Ewing, uh, the lead author of the new U.S. Traffic Calming Manual, uh, freshly out from Planners Press. Um, Reed, you've been working on traffic calming for an awfully long time. Um, how has the field changed over the last decade as you've been working on it? Well, a decade ago, there wasn't a field of traffic coming in the United States. Uh, we're just starting up, and it is now uh, a mainstream activity of transportation planning and engineering. So it's changed in the sense of grown. Mm -hmm. And uh, the controversy that has surrounded traffic coming back in the late 90s and the lawsuits and the you know, local governing bodies that decided they didn't want to actually invest in traffic coming, that stopped. Mm -hmm. uh, there's now a wide acceptance of the idea that uh, high volumes and speeds of traffic uh, detract from the livability of neighborhoods and, mm -hmm. and local officials are willing to do something about it now. So it's, it's, do you feel in a way that you've helped create the field? Well, I don't... Oh, take the credit. Come on. Okay, I'll take the credit. <laughs> okay. um, the uh, the book is national in scope. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Do you find that there are significant regional variations or parts of the country that are doing a lot more in traffic calming than others? Yes. Yeah. The the Sun Belt has been um, much more active than the Frost Belt, mm -hmm. uh, and I've wondered why that is, and I even tried to analyze it at one point. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, growth rates are higher mm -hmm. in the Sun Belt, which means growth of traffic is higher yeah. in the Sun Belt. Uh, Sun Belt communities tend to be uh, a little uh, uh, more prosperous economically, and, mm -hmm. and so they have the uh, local revenue uh, mm -hmm. to invest in traffic calming. Traffic calming is a, you know, a, a second or third tier expenditure after building new roads and maintaining existing roads. Mm -hmm. So uh, that may be part of it. And uh, the communities that get into traffic calming tend to be a little wealthier. Okay. And very progressive. I mean, you look at the communities that have, have taken the lead in traffic coming. There's Seattle and mm -hmm. Montgomery County and okay. Portland yeah. and San Diego. These are communities you associate with innovation. Sure. Sure. Okay. Interesting. Um, the book has a real taxonomy of uh, all the different kinds of traffic calming and, and what's used in different ways and how to do it and so forth. Um, in, you know, for the for the benefit of people who are not as deeply uh, schooled in this as you are, um, what's the difference between a speed lump, a speed bump, and a speed hump? Speed bump, lump, and hump. Um, I don't know. <laughs> if you don't know, who does? <laughs> yeah. the speed the speed bumps are those uh, really short devices, short in the direction of travel, mm -hmm. of maybe one to three feet long. Okay. Typically, rise three and a half, four inches. And they have very, very low de design speeds. Okay. You go over them at maybe five miles an hour, right. go much faster than that, you're uncomfortable. Right. And they're not appropriate for public streets because we don't sign our streets for five mile an hour travel right. speeds. Yeah. Uh, the humps are longer right. in the direction of travel. And because they're longer, they have higher design speeds. And they're used mostly on residential streets. Okay. And the, the problem with the hump, the basic hump, is it's very effective in slowing automobiles, mm -hmm. which means it's even more effective in slowing ambulances and fire trucks. Oh, which is bad. Which is led, which is bad. Yeah, which has led to the speed lump, which has a, a gap for the wheels of emergency vehicles that are just uh, are centered. The center lump mm -hmm. is a series of series of lumps as you go across uh, the the roadway, and the center lump is narrow enough so it can be straddled by a fire truck. And it means that uh, those automobiles that stay in their travel lane have the experience of going over a hump, mm -hmm. but a uh, fire truck or uh, another emergency vehicle uh, can s uh, straddle the center lane and uh, avoid the vertical deflection okay. and hence the delay. And get to the fire. And get to the <laughs> or fire. Or whatever faster. the emergency is. Yeah. Right. We, we've actually studied it. The, the delay associated with um, uh, lumps for fire vehicles are maybe on the order of a second or two mm. compared to maybe eight seconds or nine okay. seconds for speed humps. Mm. Uh, and yet the, the, the lumps seem to be as effective for automobiles as speed humps. Well, there you have it. 
Humps, Bumps, and Lumps with Reed Ewing at the National Planning Conference. The book is the U.S. Traffic Calming Manual on sale at APA's planningbooks.com. Oh, sorry. <laughs>